Welcome back. An alleged firebombing of a mosque, vandalism at a temple, an alleged attack on the streets of Toronto. All very disturbing events, possibly linked to the attacks in Paris last week. To talk more about the experience of Ontario Muslims in the wake of those terror attacks is Safwan Chaudhry, who is the natural spo national spokesperson of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Obviously, these uh, incidents are disturbing, but what are you hearing from community members about what they're feeling and what they're hearing? You know, believe it or not, even almost a week later, the discussion is primarily about how difficult this week has been for, I guess we feel still more pain for what's happened in Paris. That's still the primary uh, point of discussion. Um, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has strongly condemned the terror attack, and we continue to condemn all terror attacks. And of course, in the wake of that, we've seen some disturbing events uh, take place, some isolated ones in Ontario. Of course, the mosque in Peterborough was, uh, uh, there was arson there. A Muslim lady was just attacked in, right here in Toronto, not too far from where we are. Um, and almost every day we're you know, hearing about um, incidences across uh, Canada and in, in the United States as well. So there's a little bit of heightened concern. Uh, but I must say, though, that the conversation is still the grief and the sorrow that we feel for what happened in Paris. But pretty quickly, the conversation has automatically turned to bringing in the refugees and the migrants. And we even had the mayor of Calgary write an op-ed saying that the kind of reaction and the kind of discussion he's seeing in Canadian society is not reflective of what he thinks is our better selves. You know, absolutely. Um, a, a great a na narrative that we also have to keep in mind, and, and, and the counter-narrative to that is whenever we see these terror attacks, no matter where in the world they are or who's behind them, the primary objective is really twofold. A, create fear, and B, create a divide. Um, and I really hope that these terrorists don't achieve in that motive of creating that fear of those refugees. Obviously, we saw some very difficult images earlier part of the year um, coming out of Europe as these, mi uh, these refugee migrants were coming off of boats into the island of Greece and then making their way up to more further inland into Europe. Um, but in, in, while all that activity was happening, there were some beautiful images of the different football clubs hosting the refugees to come watch a game with them or other initiatives, people coming to the train stations and really bonding. And that was a great uh, scene of humanity coming together. Do you think what happened in Paris is going to change that? It's going to take I that really away? hope it doesn't because then those terrorists win because that's what they hope to achieve, to create that fear and divide. I don't believe that what those terrorists tried to do or what anybody, the Muslim lady who was attacked here in Toronto or the mosque that uh, had the arson attack, I think the motive is very similar. They, you know, they want the Muslim community to be afraid. Um, they, those terrorists want the people in Paris to be afraid um, and look at each other with suspicion. Um, and I think it's important that as long as we continue to stand united, we ensure that A, those terrorists don't win, they don't create that fear of the refugee or the fear of the other. I think in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, a couple of things are different that strike me different about Paris. One is in that case you had uh, jihadists coming over, training in the United States, and then executing this, this terror plot. Um, in this case we have French citizens living in Belgium doing the attacking. Mm -hmm. And instead of it being a high profile uh, target like the World Trade Center, we're talking about soft targets of concert halls. and. It seems that the fear of those that live amongst us is escalated because of these attacks. Yeah, and even the French prosecutor has confirmed that these weren't Syrian refugees. Um, and the problem does exist right within Europe. And, and, and I, I, we're looking forward, both here in Canada and in Europe, for authorities um, to be on high alert of these types of uh, radicalized individuals. Um, and particularly as the Muslim community, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, we, we like to work very closely with the authorities. Whenever we notice any strange activity or strange behavior or conversations, uh, but I think this is where the communities need to align and come closer together uh, to help mitigate that problem. All right, we're almost out of time, but uh, if you have a message for Ontarians who are concerned about their own safety, concerned about bringing in refugees, what do you, what do you say to them? You know, I personally have taken this opportunity um, to watch very closely how the government is going to fulfill this huge promise that they've made and, and what is that process like. Um, a lot of people think that we're just basically walking into Syria, rounding up 
25,000 people and bringing them to Canada, which is just basic, simply not the case. Um, you know, for, there's a process in place. You have to go to, to all these people that are so far on the list have gone through UN, UNHCR. Um, they have relatives in Canada. They have family members here. They have, they're documented. Uh, we know who they are. A lot of them are women and children, um, and particularly our community, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, we're working very closely with a lot of big NGOs. We have our own NGO called Humanity First, where tomorrow we're hosting a huge dinner as a fundraiser uh, for the Syrian refugees who are already here, um, and also working with the community to understand what are the concerns, um, if it's if, you know, and, and where's the lack of information? Because these aren't just people that were rounding up in Syria and bringing them to Canada. These are qualified people who are sitting in camps, whether in Turkey, Lebanon, and other parts of the Middle East, or including parts of Europe. Safwan Chowdhury uh, with the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community. Thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate Thank your you perspective. Thanks so much.